In this video I'll provide two case studies from Henning Larsen Architects on daylighting. We'll take a look at daylight simulations with inside Ecotech analysis and how to interpret it and use the data and some of the things that were done in these projects to create a good interior environment. I have now opened the Ecotech environment and I'm going to present two different case studies on daylighting optimization from Henning Larsen Architects. In this project here, it was really important to have as much daylight coming into the building as possible. So one thing that was done here was that if we go and we pull on our daily and annual sun path, you'll see that it's really tr twisted 90 degrees to have kind of this, uh, this corner here facing south. And then the fins here was dimensioned to avoid direct solar coming into the building at the hottest periods of the year so we are, wouldn't have any glare or discomfort in the building but in the same time could have, have a great amount of daylighting coming into the space. If you go to the 3D editor here and we go up here you'll see that we can turn on the average value of the project which is 6.28% daylight factor which is really uh, in the good side where we should be about 2 to 10% daylight factor. We could let's go back to the visualize tab here and let's go down to the make a cutoff like that and go to the set axis take this up a bit so what we'll see here if we go down and we work a bit with the scale let's say from 0 to 10 percent what really is the key here is to have a good distribution equally distributed over the building so this was done of course with the facade but as well with this atrium here so if we go back and we cut this off you'll see that here we had a kind of a baffles where we have light coming in a lot of light natural light coming in but we are kind of making sure not to have direct solar coming into the building and if we go back and we make the cutoff again and we go and turn on the analysis grid and we go up here and we display shadows you'll see that if we go to the summer solstice and we go and we animate the hourly values you'll see that in the morning we get some really nice light into the building and when we get to to the middle of the day we really avoid any kind of, of direct light and then in the afternoon we'll get a small amount equally distrib distributed here into the building so this is really some nice condition let's go to the window so it's here and you'll see what we're looking for here is really getting a lot of light into the building uh, in the window so quite a cool project which I think could be an inspiration for many. Let's take a look at the next project here, which is an, an office building in Copenhagen. If we look at it here, what we can see is that these facades here, due south, was really more closed to avoid discomfort with inside the spaces here. And the corner offices here will create either the morning sun or the afternoon noon sun. So this will create some good and, and because the sun, the angle of the sun, when it penetrates the room, the, the space will be pretty good. I have actually been out there and it's, it's quite a nice building to be in. And then in the atrium here, we get a lot of light in. And because people are moving around with inside this area here, we don't have any problem with the direct solar coming into the space. And so this is just a good strategy to have some open facades here where we can have an equal amount of daylighting coming into these offices here and in the same time over on the other side here. So if we go down and we scroll down and we make a cutoff section here on the set axis and we go down, go to F5 to a plan view and in the same time you'll see what I've just been talking about that in this corner here of course we will get some direct sun but we're able to use the whole interior space here. So I think this is quite a good example of how we can use or implement daylight strategies quite effectively and how we can measure them and interpret them using uh, ecotech analysis.